Hi everybody, Kenny B here on another episode of Kenny B on Zombie Movies and TV. Once again we're still on the Walking Dead series. One more episode left. So we're going to talk about Season 2, Episode 12, Ding Dong Shane is Dead. About fucking time. Thank you Rick, you fucked it up initially, but you finally came through at the end. So we're going to cover all this. First off, I would like to say, thank the writers of Walking Dead for giving T-Dog three, that's right, three whole lines. One of them was a stereotypical line, but still, at least, they're letting the T-Dog speak a little this episode. Which, if you're playing the Walking Dead drinking game, that means you're doing a shot for every line T-Dog says. Which ends up happening, uh, the number of shots you do per line is equal to the number, the current count of the number of shots. So, he had three, other three lines, you should have been doing three shots, people. We're going to have more in the Walking Dead drinking game as we're working out the rules, kind of fine-tuning them a little bit. But, I wanted to, I just said, thank the writers for giving T-Dog a little bit more lines, rather than having him standing around like a mute. Also, it's nice to see that that little bastard Carl is still being a little bastard. You know, it's bad enough after the events of the previous night with a walker killing Dell that you think Lori and Rick would keep a closer eye on this little son of a bitch. Instead, he just tells them, oh, I'm going to go over and keep watching the barn. How can you trust them? You don't watch the kid and see what he's up to. Then Rick hears from Shane about the whole, yeah, he was messing around in the swamp. Once again, you think he would tell his wife so his wife would actually spend a little bit more time keeping an eye on her son instead of being involved with everybody else's fucking business. Which leads up to what happened with Rick and Shane at the end. Plus, look who shows up. That little bastard Carl, the Wesley Crusher of Walking Dead. Now we're going to cover this whole Shane thing. Rick had suspicions about what Shane was do did. The whole, oh, he, he jumped me, and when Daryl said, you know, the kid's 125 pounds, how'd he pull it off? Rick right there should realize something was wrong. Shane's got better instinct than that, and he knows it. And you can tell he was suspicious. Because he's fallen behind Shane through most of the little walk through the woods while they're looking for Randall. With that being said, you know, it makes no sense. You know, Rick knows he's up to no good. He already gave him multiple chances to fucking come into the group and, you know... Stop going the path he was going. As soon as he you know, had clear indication of what was going on, he should have shot fucking Shane, teabagged his fucking corpse, and moved on. But instead, Rick being the pussy he is now, because now he's becoming like Dale again, a fucking humanitarian asswipe, he's, oh, Shane, you don't have to do this. You don't have to do this. Look, I put my gun down, Shane. You don't have to do this. Come on, it's fucking ridiculous. You can't trust somebody like that. He's already killed a man. Now, I know some of you people are going to say he didn't kill anybody. He just wounded Otis. Wounding Otis in front of a pack of zombies is just like killing him. The only thing was, killing him would have been far more humane. So instead, Rick tries to talk to him. Almost got capped in the process. So what happens? Boom, he goes down. He stabs, he stabs Shane. Shane dies. I celebrated with a fucking mega shot. Because that was one of the best things I've seen happen. One of the most deserving deaths, other than Dale. And after that... There's big controversy from people who don't understand the zombie apocalypse. 
which kind of irritated me. I seen this in Benoit and Willamette. When somebody dies in this kind of environment, the infection takes place. We're not quite sure how it happens. We're still researching how this happens. But recently deceased get back up and attack people. That's why it's a fucking zombie apocalypse. Stop worrying, whining about, oh, he wasn't bitten. Okay, that's not going to make a difference. You don't have to bite, you just got to die to come back as a zombie. These are the hard, fast rules of that kind of environment. The infection's probably airborne. This is what we're thinking, but we're not sure. So just face it. When your loved one dies in this coming year, put a bolt in their head. This way they don't come back and try to chew on your tasty flesh. Overall, this episode was once again another hour-long jaunt in the woods looking for somebody who was lost. But this time they were at least looking for somebody they were going to kill. I'm looking forward to the next episode because with that horde of zombies coming, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how the fuck they get out of there. Not going to be an easy task because they don't have the right firepower. But if they would have went and took those... M4s from the CDC, they would have been a little bit better equipped to deal with the threat. But of course, as I pointed out in previous episodes of this show, their scavenging skills suck. And those of you who are wondering why I don't have my normal mask on, uh, <laughs> there's been some issues this week why I've been doing my research for the St. Paddy's Day show. Uh, I kind of lost some gear, so that's why I'm with the, uh, some machine gun right now. Uh, I'll be explaining that on Friday night with the new show when I, uh, post it up. And hopefully, uh, the leprechaun situation gets cleared up. Until then, Kenny B, signing off.